Welcome to the superhuman society. When we talk about arts, like bio art, paintings, movies, installation art, even music, books, series and movies, it's all about imagination. And one particular type of art in which I really like is science fiction. Please raise your hand if you're also into science fiction. Uh, that's about, about 75% of you. And when we look at science fiction, especially science fiction movies, they envision a future, may it be very optimistic or may it be utopian, where we're going into space or also using all kinds of technologies we use right now, like virtual reality, and maybe think about what will the future look tomorrow or a couple of years ahead or even way longer ahead, like a couple of centuries. And for now, I want to ask you to look at your neighbor, if you're sitting next to one each other. And I want to know, I give you like 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds each, <laughs> sorry, uh, to talk about how does the world look in 50 years? Just come up with your primary reaction. Ready? Go. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the presentation again. Um, I saw you, uh, you're still discussing. Uh, can you tell me what your opinion is about uh, some things about when you think about the future? Um, I think it will be very crowded. Very crowded? I think we'll be having a colony on Mars filled with uh, billionaires. Which is, I think, interesting because what's going to happen with their money? It's going to be left behind, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the whole climate problem, I don't see that being solved in the next century. Okay, thank you very much. Interesting. I also want to go to another side of the, of the stage. Uh, can I ask you what's... Uh, what? <laughs> no? I should... <laughs> I think uh, there will be a great uh, big problem. Uh, if, if you look to the, uh, the series on Netflix from uh, Black Mirror, I don't know if you know them. Uh, yeah. uh, they have a, a lot of suspects uh, where you see uh, what's going to happen with our world and China is now uh, proving a new system or with face recognition. Face recognition, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's from, yeah, really dark side. So, okay. Well, Thank you. Interesting visions. Uh, and one thing that mostly comes up um, when we're talking about the future, and not only here, but in a lot of places, it's a so-called Jetson fallacy. Uh, Jetson fallacy, it's a term coined by Professor Michael Bess of the Vanderbilt University in Nashville. And uh, do you know the, the series, the Jetsons? I see a lot of some hands and some, some nodding. And he said, well, in the 1960s, you had the cartoon called the Flintstones. And the Flintstones was about a family which lived in the Stone Age with dinosaurs, etc. And that series was so successful that the producers decided to also come up with a series which was envisioned in the future. So the Jetsons is a family which lived 100 years in the future. So they have robots, they have flying cars, it's amazing. And one thing Michael Best said, that it's very unlikely that the world around us will change with self-driving cars, with facial recognition. And we as humankind, we're still the same. So when you look at the Jetsons, it's just like a family from the United States from the 1960s. Also the internal dynamics in the family, but then they live 100 years later and nothing has changed on themselves. And that's what he called the Jetson fallacy. So in the future, if we have technological uh, advancements, we're not going to change the world around us, but we're also going to change ourselves. Uh, and that's what I like to call humans 2.0. And luckily there are some artists that are working on the concept of humans 2.0. For example, Lucy McRae, she's experimenting with all kinds of facets 
of um, yeah, modifying herself. In other talks there were also some examples. One movie I really liked about this topic is uh, Ghost in the Shell, uh, in which uh, the main character is partly cyborg and partly human. And she's augmented herself and enhanced herself in many ways. And this is also a do-it-yourself artist called Stellark. Yeah, he made an ear on his uh, underarm. Uh, so these are all kinds of people who are experimenting with themselves, artists that try to look at humans 2.0. But before I continue, we are on the brinks of upgrading ourselves in major ways. To give you three examples of possible upgrades, the first one is pharmaceutical. So we are already used to popping a pill for our physique, but we are already having pills, for example, to boost our cognition called nootropics. And you also have pills to alter your mood, for example, Ritalin or beta blockers. And probably in the future, we, knew, we will know more and more about the human brain and human physique. And we're able to specific alter our mood. Like in one hour, I have to be more empathic. Okay, just pop a pill. Or in two hours, I want to be happy. Just pop a pill. That's a pharmaceutical. Another aspect in which we can upgrade ourselves is our genome. Uh, a couple of years ago, so everybody here is made out of DNA. I, uh, you, you. Also plants, animals, fungi, bacteria. Uh, so we're all based on these ACTG base pairs. And a couple of years ago, Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, he was interviewed for a magazine Wired. And he was asked, well, Bill, what would you do if you were young right now? And he said, well, I would not be hacking into computers. I will not be hacking into hardware or software, but I will be hacking into biology. I would be hacking into wetware. So you could say that DNA is the source code of life. And now with the advancement of technologies like CRISPR-Cas9, which you can see as the programming language to alter the DNA code. We're already using it in uh, embryos, but also in healthcare on so-called single gene disorders or altering the blood of uh, leukemia patients to attack the cancer cells. So we're going to maybe also to a future in which we are now using it to cure sick people, but maybe in the future I want to genetically alter myself to become smarter, stronger, faster. And the third type of upgrade is just like Ghost in the Shell, where we are merging our human body with electronics. And I am also a human guinea pig in that respect, because I've implanted a little chip in my hand. It's right here between my uh, thumb and my index finger. And I use a chip to put my contact information on it. Um, I use it to unlock my phone. And I even had my Bitcoin wallet on it for a while. Um, so you might say that my hand is val valuable at the moment, but not as valuable as a couple of months ago. So, but that uh, has nothing to do with, uh, with the chip itself. And so these are kinds of upgrades to the human body. And now you think, well, that's not that special, but the technological advances are going really, really fast. And I want to point out some of the sources of these kind of upgrades. Besides uh, science and technology companies, there are other interesting s sources of human enhancement, of human augmentation. First one is sports. This is uh, Oscar Pistorius, the Blade Runner. Um, he's now in jail, actually, but he was one of the... Um, he won uh, a lot of series in the Paralympics in uh, some running distance. And at one moment, he also applied to compete in the normal Olympics. And then the athletes in the normal Olympics, they protested because they said, well, Oscar, you are upgraded yourself in an unfair way, and we do not allow you to compete in our field. So that's interesting that, that these prothesis can work as to run faster, maybe to run further to jump higher. So sports is a source of upgrades. Another source uh, uh, which I want to elicit with a little story. When I was a little kid, and I think most of the men would also apply to this, I like to play soldier in the woods. 
But I had one problem because I was not that good. I was uh, a little fat and a little slow. But I had one main advantage, that was my fantasy. So I dreamt, I had a fantasy and I told my little friends that I had a bionic eye. So I could see them from a far, far away. And I also had silent feet, just like a ninja. And, but what's interesting is this might not be a child's fantasy anymore because American Army and especially DARPA, which is a subset uh, looking at innovation for warfare, is actually claimed or rumored that they're also working on different version of the so-called super soldier. So the Army, besides sports, is also a source of human enhancement. And the third type is um, do-it-yourself. This guy is Josia Zener, he's the CEO of the biohacking startup, The Odin. And Josia, he's just like me, he's genetically not very prone to be very muscular. And believe me, I also tried, but I'm still yeah, more of a runner type. And that's based on my genes, so nothing to blame me, it's just my genes. But he, decides, he decided that he would not stop there. So in a Facebook Live video, he did a, uh, put a needle in his legs with genetically modified cells and his aim was to, um, uh, to kick out the myostatin in some of his muscle cells and that's also not working in, in these uh, Belgium uh, cows. I don't, you, you probably know the name with the very Belgium blue, Belgium blue cows. But actually for him it did, did not work at the moment so he's not that muscular yet but it it's kind of a phenomenon where people taking more and more control in their own hands and trying things on their own do-it-yourself technology especially when these techniques are becoming more and more available so what's the effect of all these types of upgrades if you and i am going to upgrade ourselves well for as a starter or as a sort of disclaimer, we don't know. Deep brain stimulation is a method, a treatment used for people with Parkinson's. So they put an electrode in a person's head. And it's very interesting when you go on YouTube and look for videos because uh, a lot of times this treatment is very successful where people get rid of their Parkinson's symptoms, for example, tremors or their fine um, uh, movement. And there's a case uh, from the Netherlands actually where a patient was suffering from deep brain stimulation and uh, was suffering from Parkinson's and they treated him with deep brain stimulation and he got rid of his tremors. So that's really cool, you, you might say, but there's a catch because this patient was very shy, modest and introvert. And the, at the moment the DBS started, he became extrovert. He started to buy extent, expensive things. He started to steal things and he started to cheat on his wife. <laughs> and at the moment the DBS stopped, he was his old self again, but he also did not remember his character change. So with all these technologies, we, we are not sure how things are going to play out in the long run. But to give you some ideas, what about the effect on society? One thing that could happen is that these technologies will only be available for the rich. So we have a vertical segregation between the modified, the superhumans, the homo deus, and the non-modified the natural people, the homo sapiens. As an effect, you might also suspect that if the rich, rich people are going to upgrade themselves to become smarter, to live longer, etc., that the rest of us, we would not agree with that and will lead to unrest and maybe to riots. So a possible effect could be that there will be a welfare state in which the government provides all of us certain type of upgrades. Another effect could be that you don't only have vertical segregation, but you also have horizontal segregation. For example, just like the Amish right now in the United States, they made their own decision not to apply certain technologies. So maybe in the future you have a colony of non-modified people. And as a trend, because we as people, we also like to come together, join like-minded people, 
Maybe you also have a colony of people who did all ty types of upgrades to improve their musical ability. So if you, you have a musical uh, colony. And you also have the people who tried all kinds of upgrades, genetically, electronically, maybe pharmaceutical, to upgrade their cognition. So you have a colony of rare, really smart people. So that's also a possible scenario. So if we heading into the superhuman society, which can be 10 years ahead, 50 years ahead, 100 years ahead, 1000 years ahead, I don't know. What should we do? Uh, I don't know, but I have some ideas. The first one is that we probably need to legalize some of these upgrades. Because if we are not going to legalize it, it can ha the same thing can happen as the alcohol ban in the beginning of the 20th century in the United States, where you get a black market of all kinds of upgrades. And you go on the dark web and to buy a genetically upgrade or buy a brain implant upgrade or whatever. Another thing, is that besides legislation, we also need to put on real rules uh, in law. And probably that's also a collective action. And an example is the car industry, where from the beginning of the introduction of cars, every year there were more and more people killed in car accidents. Till about the 1970, then it started to decline. And the reason was not that the car manufacturers did something. Well, they did something, but it was because of Rolf Neighbor. He published a book a couple of years earlier called Unsafe at Any Speed, in which he criticized car manufacturers and also the governments for not installing really simple precautions, for example, a safety belt and roundabouts, etc. So, and you can see the same thing with the Europe European privacy law. We cannot leave it to companies technology companies to put in their own regulations, I think we still need rules and regulations from the governments. And the third collective action we need to do, I think, is to think more and more about the ethics. Because we are heading into a future where everything is possible and we need to know and accept with each other what kind of upgrades do you want to do, when, how, by whom, for which period, etc. So we need to discuss these kinds of questions. And we also need to know, not only talk about collective action, but also about individual action. Because we have to think, for yourself you need to think, what are my human values? So when you remember this horizontal segregation, maybe for you musicality is very important and you decide to upgrade yourself because you want to perform better or enjoy listening to music better. And probably there's a trade-off. I don't think you can be like a super soldier, super sporty, super musician, but you decide for yourself, I want that kind of brain chip to enhance my musicality, and then I cannot use another kind of brain chip to incre increase my tennis skills, for example. And you need to think about your own human values, what's important, what kind of upgrades you want to do, but also think about what is the effect of your upgrade on the people around you and maybe also on society. And one thing that can help to think about, uh, about yourself, about the society in the future, the superhuman society or yourself as a superhuman, is again imagination. And I think we need imagination to think about the possible consequences and possible upgrades of ourselves. And again, art can help us. For example, this is Floris Kijk, who made a, a, the modular body as a kind of bio artist, but also photo photography, like one of the photographers here. They make us think about the future and the things that are ahead. And also this guy, this is a cyborg artist called Neil Harbinson. And now he can hear colors. It's really interesting. You could sh shoot him, look him up on the internet. And also again, I think Netflix and Black Mirror is really awesome example to make us think about ethical consequences of all kinds of things that are happening right now. And also like this, implanting yourself with a chip. What would happen to yourself, to your father or mother, and also to society. So as a conclusion, I think we are heading to a future of a superhuman society where we can upgrade ourselves both intellectually, 
physically, maybe emotionally, but we also need to think about, can we upgrade ourselves, our human values, or can we also lead it to an upgraded society? And if you want to follow me on my investigation of the superhuman society, uh, you can go to superhumantalks.com where also this video will be uh, displayed in a couple of weeks or days. And I also, as a sort of um, premiere, uh, yesterday my book, on a Friday my book has published. I have some copies with me. It's 20 euros, the ebook is 15 euros. It's called Biohacking, it's a Dutch book. Uh, and I also have some cards with me. So you don't need to scan my hand, but I actually have normal cards if you also want to know more about my podcast and my other sites and etc. Thank you very much.